Hey everyone, happy Saturday. Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. Yesterday during a live stream, I decided to try and tackle a purse project using some of my 20 year old granny hexagons. Ran into some design snags and we did say during the tutorial or the live stream, I guess, that uh, if it worked out, we would make a tutorial on how to build the purse. Well, the first thing I've run into is that there are several little things I would have done differently with the granny hexagons before building the purse. Um, so we do have an original granny shell hexagon tutorial. You can use that, no problem, to make seven different hexagons for your purse, if you're gonna make a purse out of them. The only thing I would do with that tutorial is add a finishing row of single crochet in which you put a, two single crochets in every corner space. So if you're comfortable with those kinds of verbal directions and you wanna use the original granny shell um, hexagon, then we'll link that tutorial down below and in the pinned comment, and it's perfect, it'll work just fine. So would the African flower hexagon motif that we did um, also on this channel. It'll just make for a smaller purse, which would be just as cute. We'll link it down below as well. Today's tutorial is a little bit of a different kind of granny hexagon. It's instead of using shells, it's using a three double crochet cluster. So it's technically the double crochet three together stitch, but because we're working them into the same space, it becomes a cluster. Um, but we're also making them a little bit sort of tighter and smaller, just so that the spaces themselves are a bit smaller, which makes this kind of a, a nicer hexagon motif for something like a purse or blankets or anything else you might want to use it for. So any of the hexagon motifs would work for a purse, but uh, we thought since I was in the process of fiddling through the design process that we might as well put together another video for you on a different version of a granny hexagon. So this is a granny cluster hexagon. Um, it's seven inches from point to point across, so no matter how you, you slice it, and I do the single crochet finishing row on this one. Um, so if you just want to add the finishing row to the other hexagons, you can do that too. Um, and maybe I'll try and do one of those timestamp things. So if you just want the single crochet row, I'll try and timestamp that down below. I don't know, some of this tech is new to me. <laughs> Anyway, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we'll stitch up some granny cluster hexagons together. <laughs> In order to make our granny cluster hexagons, I'm using four different colors today. I've got a row one, row two, row three, and row four slash five colors. So four colors, A, B, C, and D. You need around two and a half yards for row one, about five yards for row two, seven yards for row three, and around 14 yards for rows four and five. So this is definitely a scrap project. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook. This is also known as an I or a nine. And for demonstration purposes today, I'm using size four medium weight acrylic yarn. But you can use any yarn weight or fiber that you like and any comfortable hook that matches it. So once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to take color A or our center color. We're going to make a slip knot and we're going to chain six. So chain six, join with a slip stitch to the first chain. We're making a ring to start. And here we go. We're going to start with a double crochet two together stitch. But before we get into that, we're going to chain two. So the chain two that starts every single row is going to kind of count as part of a double crochet three together uh, stitch or a double crochet. I know that sounds a little confusing, but we're basically just starting <laughs> rows one, two, three, and four with a chain two. Into the same circle, we're going to double crochet two stitches together. So we yarn over, pick up a loop, and work the first half of the double crochet, and then repeat, yarn over, pick up a loop, work the first half of a double crochet. You'll have three loops on your hook. So there's your chain two and two half worked double crochets. Yarn over and pull back through everything. And that's a double crochet two together cluster, but it's going to count as a double crochet three together stitch just because we've got that little chain two there. Let's chain two. 
into the same ring, we're going to do it again. So this is a double crochet three together cluster. We're going to yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, do it again, yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, back through two, yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, back through two. So you've got three half worked double crochet stitches sitting below your hook. That's the loop from your working loop. That's four loops all together. Yarn over, pull back through everything. And that is a three double crochet together, or in this case, a little cluster. Chain two. And since this is a hexagon, we need four more of these. And we begin with another double crochet, three stitches together cluster. Yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull back through the first two, yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull back through the first two, yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull back through the first two, Make sure you've got four loops on your hook, three half work double crochets, yarn over, pull back through everything. Chain two. You're going to do that three more times and I'll hook up with you back at the beginning. We should all have six regular looking shells that are actually three double crochet together clusters. And the only reason they're a cluster is because you're kind of working them into the same little place. So three double crochets worked into the same place is usually a shell, but we're kind of cinching them together at the top by, by working three of them together at the top. So you'll notice there's three stitches showing, but across the top there's only one loop. So that's how you know it's a three double crochet together stitch. So there's three stitches showing but there's only one loop of the actual stitch. Don't forget, we've got two chains in between. And it's technically a cluster because it's worked into the same place. If you were working three double crochet together across three separate stitches that were all kind of worked into previous stitches, then they would, it would have the effect of it closing in at the top as well, but the bottom would be a little more flared out. So it's technically three double crochets together, but in this case, it's operating as a cluster. Don't forget your last two chains. We're going to find the chain two that began the whole thing and join with a slip stitch to it. If you didn't want to fasten off your color, you would just slip stitch into that stitch and then slip stitch into the chain two space because we're all gonna start in a chain two space, but I'm changing colors. So I'm gonna stop right there, snip my yarn, And I'm going to weave my tails in later and or work over top of them. And I do like to sort of pull this through the top of the next stitch and anchor it near the chain two space that I'm going to join my new yarn in. That just helps me work over some of those stitches and that gets me started. All right, let's get color number two or color B. Color B, I'm switching to blue. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. We're going to join with a slip stitch in that chain two space. I'm going to work over top of both of my tails. So I'm going to just wrangle them here. There we go. Joining with a slip stitch. And we're going to chain two. Remember all of these rows are going to start with a chain two, which is the first little part of a double crochet two together cluster. So we're going to finish that with yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, back through two, yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, back through two. So remember, if you start with a chain two, you only want to work two uh, half worked, half double crochets. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull back through everything. And that's going to count as a double crochet three together cluster. Chain two, this is our first little corner. Before we leave the space, we're going to work a three double crochet or double crochet three together stitch or cluster. So you yarn over and work the first half of three double crochets. Yarn over. Remember that now you should have four loops on your hook before you finish. You should have three half worked double crochets. Yarn over. Pull back through everything. And before you leave, like a lot of corners in these motifs, chain one, because we want chain one spaces worked around the edge. I'm going to put my little tails to the back now. We're working into chain two corner spaces all the way around. Remember this is a hexagon. We need six sides 
every single chain two space gets the same thing. A three double crochet together cluster. So you start and work the first half of three double crochets. Make sure that you've got four loops on your hook. And then over, pull back through everything. Chain two and work another double crochet three together cluster. Mm -hmm. And before you leave, chain one. So it's double crochet three together, chain two, double crochet three together, chain one in every single one of those chain two spaces. And I'll catch up with you at the beginning again. Once you get back to the beginning, you'll finish double crochet three together, chain two, double crochet three together, chain one, don't forget that last chain one, and then you're going to find the top of the chain two and just slip your hook through it and slip stitch to join. So you've got, now this is a granny square, granny hexagon style, like we are still kind of working with the whole shell chain two shell concept in the corners, but instead of it being a shell, we're just pinching them together at the top and creating double crochet three together stitches instead. And it ends up giving you a nice little kind of bubbly cluster, almost like a flower sort of feel. It's really nice. And we're still working, so cluster, chain two, cluster, chain one, cluster, chain two, cluster, chain one. That was row two. You should have 12 clusters six chain two spaces and six chain one spaces. And if you have trouble seeing your chain two spaces, you might want to just go around and pull them all out because that is going to help you see that hexagon shape that is starting to emerge. And it's always good to sort of do that. If you find your work is tight or a bit loose, you can put clips on all of your four or your six corners just so that you don't miss them going forward. I'm going to change colors again. If you weren't changing colors, you would slip stitch into this stitch and then slip stitch into that chain two corner space. And then we would begin from the corner space like the rest of us. Otherwise, you can just snip your yarn, fasten off, and grab your next color. That would be color C. We're going to take color C now, just like we did with row two. We're going to start with a slip knot. We're going to start in a chain two corner space, join with a slip stitch. I'm going to work over top of my little tails to start. Chain two, because we're going to work a modified double crochet three together. So we chain two, work two of a regular double crochet two together stitch. So you've got three on your hook, but that's going to count as a double crochet three together cluster. Yarn over, pull back through everything. That's to start. Chain two and the rest is very familiar. Double crochet three together. Make sure you've got four loops there. Pull back through everything. All the yarn goes skittering across the desk. <laughs> chain one before you leave the corner. So there's your corner. So basically cluster, chain two, cluster, chain one. And now, I think I will just sort of tuck in that little tail. So I'm just going to pull it. Actually, no, I'm going to do that later. Sometimes I like to work over top of them. Sometimes I don't. I think I'll just put them to the end here. Now we've got chain one side spaces. So if you see a chain one side space, it gets one cluster, just like if we were making a shell, traditional shell motif. Instead of the shell, we're using a cluster. So into that chain one space, we're going to double crochet three stitches together. You'll have four loops on your hook. Pull back through everything. Chain one, because that makes the chain one space for the next row, and we're into a chain two corner space. So cluster, chain two, cluster, chain one. Remember these are double crochet, three stitches together, clusters. Ba -bum. Don't forget the chain two to create the corner. Double crochet, three stitches together. Double crochet, three stitch together, cluster, and then chain one before you leave. 
So there's your new corner space and here's your first corner space and you can see that first side is complete. You'll have three clusters running across each side. The next space is a chain one space so it gets one cluster. Uh -huh. Chain one and then you're into a chain two space. If it's a chain two space, it gets two clusters. So cluster, chain two, cluster, chain one. Don't forget that chain one before you leave. It's very important. Makes things nice and even along the edges. And then you're just repeating all the way around. So if it's a chain one space, it gets a cluster, chain one. If it's a chain two space, it gets cluster, chain two, cluster, chain one. Chain one and then repeat. And that's it. I'll see you back at the beginning. At the end of row three, you'll have 18 clusters. You'll have six chain two corner spaces and, and 12 chain one spaces. So you'll have two along each side, chain one space, chain one space, because they're going to be on either side of those single clusters. Don't forget that last chain one. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain two that began the row. Make sure you get the actual chain two. <laughs> there we go. That is row three complete. And I'm going to fasten off, but if you were not fastening off, you could just slip stitch across to the chain two corner space. Don't need much of a tail. I'm just gonna pull this through to the corner so I can work over top of it. Going to be joining a fourth color now for row four, but before I do, I'm going to just pull out those corner spaces. A slightly tighter stitch is good for these little motifs because when you get them all assembled into a project, the weight of the project will kind of pull them out. But if they're really buckling in the center, um, you could always just block them individually if you wanted to for storage or before you put them together. But with a little bit of heat from your hand and a little bit of sort of stretching and blocking, they will lay flat. All right, let's grab color D. My fourth color, color D, I'm gonna start with a slip knot. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch in the chain to corner space. We all wanna start in the corner space. So join with a slip stitch chain two and work two double crochets together into the same space. So it counts as a double crochet three together cluster. There we go. And we're in a corner, so we're gonna chain two, work a double crochet three together cluster into the same place. Oops. Try and keep it in the corner, in the corner space, Jada. <laughs> there we go. And chain one. And now across this row, we've got two chain one spaces. So that's cluster chain one, cluster chain one, before you get to your corner space, which is cluster chain two, cluster chain one. And remember the clusters are a chain or a two, three double crochet together. Once you work a few of these, they kind of get faster and faster and faster. Just make sure that you've got three of them or four loops on your hook as opposed to five or six because once you get <laughs> once you get going sometimes you'll make so many of these that you'll you'll add a couple of extra double crochets when you don't need them. Always remember that chain one before you leave. When you get to the chain two corner space, it's a double crochet, three together cluster, chain two double crochet, three together cluster, chain one. So before you leave a space, always remember that chain one, it counts as the little chain one space for the next row. If you were gonna add six successive rows, which you could if you wanted to, you basically just keep repeating this row. So it's a cluster, chain one, in every chain one space, and every chain two space gets cluster, chain two, cluster, chain one. Exactly like the previous row, it's just that every row now grows, every side grows by a cluster and a chain one space, and every row grows by six clusters in total and six chain one spaces in total. So 
so you can keep going. I will hook up with you at the end of row four, and then we're going to do a little finishing row of single crochet. I am finished row four. Don't forget that last chain one, and you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain two space if you're adding more rows of the cluster stitch. If not, if you're going to slip stitch into that top of that first sort of real feeling stitch there. And that is how we're going to finish your final row before we add a row of single crochet. So the single crochet finishing is just kind of gives this a nice little bit of extra color punch. And if you're using these motifs for a purse like I'm going to be, I just feel like it, I don't know, it just gives it a little extra something for the joining. Uh, this is optional, but I like the way it looks. We're going to chain one, single crochet in the same place, and into the chain two space we're going to single crochet two times. So chain two space gets two single crochet. Single crochet into the top of the next cluster, single crochet into the chain one space, single crochet into the top of the cluster, single crochet into the chain one space, single crochet into the top of the cluster, single crochet into the chain one space, single crochet into the top of the cluster, and then that brings you back to a chain two space, which gets two single crochet. And that's all you're going to do all the way around. Single crochet in the top of a cluster, single crochet in the chain one space. So pretty easy to remember. You're either single crocheting into an actual stitch or single crocheting into a space. Don't forget it's two single crochet in the corner spaces and I'll catch up with you at the beginning. At the end of that last row, row five, or that finishing single crochet row, single crochet into the last space and join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain, or the, I should say the single crochet that began the whole row. Then you can fasten off, take some time to weave in all of those tails, and if you feel like your hexagon is really tight, then you can feel free to do a little steam blocking, but remember that these are going to stretch out with use, so you don't have to worry too much about, about blocking them unless they're crazy tight and they're so tight that you can't even sort of see how you would comfortably join them together. <laughs> More importantly, you should have six chain two corner spaces. Uh, actually, no, you shouldn't have any corner spaces after the finishing row, but you can still grab those six corner spaces from row four and pull it out. And then use the heat of your hand to flatten everything down. And that will give you a very nice, very neat, and relatively flat granny hexagon made out of the double crochet three together clusters. So nice small spaces and uh, a nice little finishing row. Gives it an extra little punch of color. So yeah, smaller spaces, um, slightly tighter stitches. If you found them to be a little on the tight side um, and you're not sure you wanna block it or just stretch it back into shape, um, you can always, of course, use a bigger hook. You can change up the weight of your yarn. Um, like we said in the materials, you can use any hook or yarn weight technically for these motifs. Uh, just know that a smaller hook and smaller weight yarn or lighter weight yarn will result in smaller motifs in general. Uh, larger hook, heavier weight yarn, bigger motifs in general. Um, the hook size will adjust your tension, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and of course you can use different fibers. It's just a motif, so you can use whatever you've got lying around. I'm definitely kind of focusing in on scraps for the motifs this year. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this different little granny hexagon pattern uh, working along with us today, and we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. Bye. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.